This is Profiles in Risk. Hosted by Nick Lamparelli. Every week, we interview those who risk life, limb, fortunes, career, and reputation, and those who work behind the scenes who look to protect and enlighten us about risk. You can find the show notes and other insurance-related content at insnerds.com. That's I-N-S-N-E-R-D-S dot com. Now, on to the show. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. This is Profiles in Risk, and I am your host, Nick Lamparelli. I'm very pleased to be able to introduce a couple of guests from Slice Insurance, Valerie Gergantas. Valerie is the Managing Director of Business Development for Slice Labs, and Ernest Hirsch, who is the Co-Founder and VP of Sales and Marketing. Slice Labs is a leading on-demand insurance cloud platform provider that empowers insurers to deliver new value to customers through direct insurance or insurance agent models without investing in infrastructure to provide customized on-demand, that's going to be a key word throughout this conversation, pay-as-you-go insurance products. Valerie and Ernest, welcome to Profiles in Risk. Thank you for inviting us. Ernie, you go ahead as well. No, I appreciate it. It's a, very, it's, a, it's a good honor, a great honor, and we really appreciate the opportunity to speak to you and your audience uh, about what we're doing and why we're doing it and how we do it and you know, why were we founded and all the rest of the things that typically uh, you know, come up with startups. Yep. I, I love it. I'm, I'm very eager to dig into those. So I'm, I'm going to give you the, the easiest question of them all. Uh, what is Slice and what does Slice do? So I can dig in, uh, Ernie, if that's yeah, okay. No, Great. So Slice was reinvented, essentially. I worked with the founders, uh, including Ernie, for a number of years. And I think we all have probably about 150 or so combined years of insurance and technology experience. You're all gray, uh, gray and aging. Yeah, well, we're not. We're not. But combined, combined, combined. you know, we do. Uh, but we, we wanted to reshape insurance. And what does that mean? So we're in the insure tech space. As you said, we're an insurance as a platform and services organization, but we wanted to basically, you know, build an organization that was built from the cloud down and not from the ground up. And what does that mean? That means that the, you know, the, the old way of doing things, and I, I don't mean to disrespect anyone by saying that, but the old way of doing things is a lot of implementation fees, a lot of IT, a lot of, you know, the old mothership, everything is included, etc., which makes it very difficult for organizations to launch products quickly into the market space. Consumers are, you know, have a very different mindset. They want to buy insurance differently and they don't want it sold to them in the way that it was typically sold to them, which was, you know, 150 underwriting questions and whatnot. And so we felt that there was a gap that we needed to serve and we launched our own initial product for, for the purposes of testing that product and then testing the platform of what slice would become and with the intention of you know what slice would be so that and that is uh, you know a couple of things a few things actually technology methodology and insurance you know when i i've met tim atia who's uh who's a ceo yes. and i met seth and i so i'm very familiar with slice and then as you're des as you, as you're describing it in my mind i'm like that's not the slice that I know. The slice that I know is like the Airbnb insurance, the Uber insurance. And so it's, I, I want to tap into one, um, the, the on-demand part, which gets to what you were saying, Valerie, which is how consumers want to consume products and, and you know, by default uh, in insurance and um, how you've transitioned to a model that's much more encompassing where it's, it, you're helping the entire industry sort of try to leap that hurdle. So can, can we start with um, the initial product, the, the Airbnb, the Uber, the on-demand, that part of it? 
and, and talk about how you're transitioning over to helping other carriers kind of do the same thing. <clears throat> Maybe if I could take that one, uh, Valerie, uh, if you don't mind. Sure, and, I thought uh, I would, but you go ahead, Ernie. <laughs> help answer that. Um, so, you know, um, honestly, uh, Slice as a company really was founded, uh, you know, when we sat around Tim and Stu and, and myself, we sat at Stu's dining room table, you know, just over three years ago and, and really thought about what it was that you know, was going to make a difference to consumers for the future you know, and or just insurance distribution and kind of the way that things are done. So if you think about the possibilities that technology brings to the table, you look around and you say, well, do we really need the data from a consumer uh, or from a customer that they've been typically filling in? I mean, you know, we have innumerable data sources we can go get data from, uh, obviously through, you know, technology and API process and so forth. That information can be gleaned from any any number of sources, and it doesn't make any difference what that information needs to be. So, in the case of our home share product, we go out and you know we've we've uh, actually gone after public and private databases and so forth to get the information that you you know you would need to write the risk. Right? Uh, that information, uh, you know, frequently. I mean, our home share product. I mean, really think of it as uh, a a, a, a homeowner product um, <clears throat> because, uh, of course, there are elements of homeowner insurance in it. There are some unique coverages, of course, as well. And, and then it kind of crosses the line in that, um, you know, as a homeowner uh, who is, uh, you know, effectively home sharing, you really become a business for the period of time you're doing that. And, you know, from a legal perspective, uh, you're on the hook for, things that might happen in the home or, you know, anything that could happen uh, to you or to, uh, to, to the, to your customer or to the, you know, uh, the home itself. So there's a commercial element to that as well. Uh, my point is, is that in the end, uh, that nature, the whole nature of being able to provide products to consumers uh, the way that they uh, are earning their income, for example. So we charge a nightly rate, right? Uh, we sell the policy for a night or for three nights or for a week or a month or whatever it, it is that, you know, somebody is requiring. Uh, but it isn't that, you know, I've got to go buy an annual policy. Uh, and if I, you know, um, in the home share example, if I do it right, right, um, you know, it's going to cost me a lot of money for this sort of quote unquote commercial policy that, uh, that I need. So <clears throat> it's really the opportunity to rethink how, insurance is bought or sold uh, and, and ultimately, you know, how the consumer is protected because that's, you know, ultimately, obviously, the customer needs the protection. Uh, it's just that things are changing pretty rapidly. And by the way, we get information from those databases that's, you know, probably more accurate than most people, you know, fill in. Uh, since that time, you know, we've moved on to working uh, in the rideshare space, uh, we have a new cyber product that's been uh, for small businesses that's uh, just been introduced uh, into the market, uh, which is a sub subscription model. So it's really that notion of being able to rethink uh, what uh, products uh, need to look like, uh, how consumers want to consume them, and giving the uh, consumer the option to buy products in a way that just hasn't been there before. Uh, the product, uh, the, the, you know, frankly, the technology and the opportunity has always been there or it hasn't always been there. It's been there for a long time. Uh, but in the end, it is there now. And, uh, you know, why, why, why aren't we doing that? Well, we are, is, is kind of the point. Yeah. Are there any insurance limitations to what, what we could consider on demand? Um, it, makes, it seems it makes a lot of sense for ride share, for home sharing. Um, where there are the, you know, there are blocks where it's like, okay, this is my personal time. Oops, now I am in business, and you know, it, it needs to be right. able to flip seamlessly through it. You just talked about cyber. Are there are there any insurance limitations, or do you think there's the possibility that on demand could um, really spread its tentacles out to encapture a lot of what we consider insurance today? Yeah. So. Um... 
uh, Valerie, I'll take that one too, <laughs> and then I'll, sure. uh, I'll stop sure. talking. But, uh, <laughs> no, yeah, well. you know, there really aren't, uh, honestly, there really are no limitations at this point. And when we think about on demand, I mean, that, that you know, that word or, or that, you know, choice of words, of course, means thing, a variety of things to different people. You know, in some cases, you think about on demand and people think of, um, you know, uh, the on-demand economy or the, you know, the, the, the gig economy kind of, kind of deal. Uh, we think of it more broadly. Uh, you know, yes, that's, the, that's correct. I mean, the fact is, is you can sell insurance to a tasker, for example, who's doing a two hour job. You can sell insurance to somebody uh, who, who needs it only for that two hours. You can sell it for somebody who needs it for the night. Uh, you know, maybe it's for a week or, you know, whatever. It's really more back to the notion of how can we devise products that, you know, uh, are based on signals or events, uh, possibility of, uh, you know, somebody or something signaling, uh, you know, you from uh, some type of device, IoT device, or maybe it's a weather pattern or, you know, whatever we want to think of to uh, get the appropriate protection for the risk that's taken at the time you know, it's taken. So um, if you think about the cyber product, for example, or I could even you know, describe a contractor product that we've been working on, uh, the point is, is that it's a, you know, it has a, uh, a certain uh, level of coverage uh, and that you know, can be chosen by the individual um, you know, from X to Y in terms of uh, the amount of coverage they wish. Uh, and, you know, it has that uh, as, as one of the elements. But one of the other, other elements is, is that you uh, subscribe to it. So the subscription is for a month at a time. Uh, and do we have this, you know, sophisticated billing system? No, it's just, you know, you put it on your credit card. So at the end of the month, uh, you know, let's say that you, and we, and we provide an opportunity for a risk score at risk score uh, in that case of the cyber product uh, then dictates, uh, you know, what you might pay for the insurance. Uh, we, and we encourage uh, people to take action that would lower their cybersecurity risk. Uh, you know, as a new employee comes in, you know, the education that, that may be necessary, uh, the security that, you know, goes around uh, what they do with their computers and their networks and so forth. So all of those things are taken into account and we get signals based on, uh, you know, a variety of uh, inputs uh, that allow us to, you know, provide that kind of a score. And then, you know, sometimes the, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, in fact, what we're looking for, uh, honestly, is people to take that risk score down uh, and then, you know, they pay less for the insurance. So there's no real, <clears throat> so for example, let's think, uh, you, could, you could think health insurance, you could think, uh, you know, you could think uh, term life insurance, uh, you could think travel insurance. Uh, there's really no limitation as far as we're concerned uh, as to how people should be consuming, uh, even if they needed homeowner insurance, for example, uh, a homeowner type uh, product that, you know, could be embedded in a mortgage, for example, as it's, as it's, as it's allowed, you know, from a regulatory perspective. Uh, and then it's just part of your mortgage, right? And so, you pay for it on a monthly basis, uh, becomes part of the system. And, you know, everybody knows uh, instead of ha it taking 29 days, for example, in the homeowner case, for some, uh, you know, uh, buddy to let their a mortgage company know or the insurance company to let the mortgage company know that you've got insurance, you know, it could take 29 milliseconds. So we think that ultimately the future of this whole thing is going toward, um, a sort of an embedded opportunity that is insurance embedded in a service, right. Of some type. So, yeah. so th long that's way of saying that, but that's the insurance cloud service platform. Correct. Correct. Okay. So my, my question is there's, there's always in it, it, what I found in, in insure tech is, you know, you build this technology and you can do one of two things with it. You can, uh, keep it for yourself and, you know, create that underwriting or distribution advantage and try to maximize the value of the technology that you built uh, to get an edge in the marketplace that way, or you become the marketplace. You, you sell it into the marketplace to help them. 
you, could could either of you talk about uh, that that trade off? That it's almost like a, a dilemma in a way of making that decision of how do you how do you maximize the benefit of the technology? Well, you want to take that, or you want me to? Sure, yeah. sure. I'm 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 happy to take that. Um, so. Ultimately, what Slice is, is not necessarily um, a distribution channel or a dilemma channel or a disruptor channel. Uh, you know, when we, when we came to be, um, is we came, and if you picture a quadrant and you picture, you know, the upper right hand of, of the quadrant uh, in marketing, for instance, um, we talk about what is the new new and the new new is uh, you know slice being the new way that consumers purchase things the new way that insurers engage uh, and and we engage with them for that matter and the new way that we launch products into the marketplace so there are those three things that are the new new um, which which help insurers to get into the um, you know, space of basically following consumers, uh, but not just following consumers, being, being on top of consumers, being ahead of consumers, because at this stage in time, um, and if I, you know, can, can go back to our, our lineage, uh, we've seen that insurers are, are not there. Um, so, you know, we are seeking to be there and to help insurers to be at that place in time where, yeah. sorry, go ahead. You want to? Well, no, I just thought I'd, uh, sorry, I'd, I'd jump in here for a second. And, and, you know, in the end, if you think about uh, the marketplace and I understand, you know, where you're coming from, from a juxtaposition perspective and, you know, the tension, right? So how do you assist uh uh, how do you do your own thing, right, in terms of uh, the technology that you're using and, you know, being able to distribute uh, in a new and unique uh, sort of way. Uh, although it doesn't, you know, what's interesting about the platform uh, is it doesn't make any difference, frankly, that, uh, you know, if somebody wanted to do a product that was fairly traditional, but they wanted to digitize it because, of course, it's a fully and fundamentally digital platform, uh, you know, built from the ground up. <clears throat> um, you get this opportunity to, uh, you know, eat your own dog food, so to speak. So uh, <laughs> our, our uh, you, you know, it really is, it's an interesting euphemism, it's a really interesting term, right? Uh, you know, idiom, right? Because if you think about it, uh, you know, the first thing that we did was just to create uh, the home share product. You know, we've got the, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the cyber product out next and, and, you know, there's some other things that are on the way. Uh, and the reason for that is, is because we needed to, you know, put together the platform uh, in a manner in terms of the, uh, you know, what we're actually doing, not only with the technology, but the processes, uh, the uh, opportunity for us to, uh, you know, have um, uh, uh the the uh, uh, processes and so forth that allow us to then uh, provide that uh, you know same opportunity to insurers. So we we thought from the very beginning, really, when we sat down at that dining room table, as I as I mentioned, uh, and there were just the three of us before we had any employees at all. Uh, you know, the thought was if we were able to do what you're talking about, uh, but at the same time assist the industry. Uh, you know, we think that that's a pretty good thing. Uh, there's no reason for us, for example, to not want to, you know, work with insurers or work with banks or work with, you know, somebody who thinks that they would like to offer a protection product to a consumer. Uh, it doesn't have to be just a carrier. But in fact, the, the point I'm making is, is that for anybody who wants to be able to offer through a platform that, you know, has uh, cost advantages uh, is fully digital, you know, understands uh, and is replete with, uh, you know, uh, all of the things that are required for a, a really significant and best customer journey, because that's the one thing that we always are focused on so much when we're, you know, working on uh, products and projects for, for folks that, uh, you know, and methodology uh, for folks that, you know, are, are, are subscribing to the platform. Uh, at the same time, you know, we're gaining knowledge uh, to, be able to put products out that you know may, we may want to put out on our own and in fact what we really think of this is this significant partnership 
that word gets overused an amazing amount, of course, partnership, but we really truly believe in that. Uh, you know, we, we tend to think that our ability to be a part of the DNA of these companies uh, and then uh, a, a sort of um, cooperation exists where we may then take back and you know, work to, within a jurisdiction, sell that product. Uh, as well, you know, obviously with permission from the companies that we're working with, uh, that all just adds to uh, the capability in the marketplace, and it actually adds to the marketplace. So we feel pretty strongly that uh, it's actually a, 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 a really interesting uh, concept and setup, and, and so far our, our insurance partners uh, agree. Yes, so I'm as you're as you're describing that Ernest and Valeria I keep thinking okay carriers check uh I'm I'm an MGA that's what I do during my day job and it sounds like that's a check right like an an MGA could could use your platform to uh, create a, a digital environment for products that they're yes. thinking about bringing to market yep. but then I started thinking cuz I I also deal with let's say homeowners associations or 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 co uh, co-ops that have like forcing where you know unit holders need to um each have a minimum amount of insurance and there's difficulty in sort of managing that I started thinking well that would be useful too like your platform could probably be used to partner up the insurance with the co-op to create that environment where it'd be easy for the co-op to kind of step in and just check a box off say i i bought my insurance and it's through here and you can check it on the platform so it could start extending out that way too where there's uh, ancillary products like uh, a rental or a loan yeah. or something that's tied to insurance absolutely you know if you think about if you think about this, I mean, there have been a lot of attempts, as you know, since you're an MGA, you, you understand the whole marketplace concept. There have always been, there have been lots of attempts, and, and people now talk about peer-to-peer, -peer, which is really nothing more, I think, than a mutual, right? I'm pretty sure that's how mutuals got founded. Um, but my point is, is that in the end, the ability for you to be able to offer uh, protection uh, in, uh, you know, because it's digital, uh, you know, buried inside of a service or within uh, some uh, type of organization that needs to offer insurance uh, of some type, regardless of the type that it is, to their customer base or to a broader audience than even their customer base, you know, which then ultimately perhaps becomes a customer base. Yeah, the answer is, is that there's no question that being able to do that uh, in, in a seamless manner. So, you know, being buried inside of another platform, being buried inside of a service, uh, you know, uh, being embedded, uh, I don't know, for lack of a better term, you could, I mean, you could literally embed insurance uh, in the operating system of an, of an automobile, as long as it's allowed from a regulatory perspective, there'd be no reason why you couldn't do that, or into the control system. So that regardless of the uh, what's happening with that automobile as we get into autonomous vehicles, for example. Uh, you know, it's just a thought, but, but we're pretty sure, uh, you know, that this is, this is the kind of thing that's going to work really well, that you get into, um, you know, the car uh, for, uh, you know, it's being rented to somebody. Somebody calls up and, and the car comes to your house, you know, when you get to the autonomous vehicle situation, and you want to drive it. Uh, so if you touch the wheel, all of a sudden there's a certain kind of risk. If you don't touch the wheel, there's a certain kind of risk. The car then, you know, gets driven off, uh, you know, goes to Home Depot or whatever, you get back and uh, you're done for uh, in a couple of hours and the car goes off to be rented to somebody else. During that period of time, there's a certain kind of risk, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So regardless of the use of the uh, kinds of things that we're doing now, homes, vehicles, you know, uh, uh, in the tasking, the, you know, renting of objects or, or, or tools or whatever. Uh, in the end, there's liability, there's product, and, and there's, a, you know, a bunch of different kinds of covers that you need. But there's no reason to believe that you can't ensure the risk for the period of time it's being taken and make that uh, only the period of time uh, that, or, or, you know, even if it's a continuous coverage, the risk might vary and therefore the cover varies or, and or the amount of money that's paid varies and so forth and so on. That's what you get now in a sort of a, uh, you know, modern 
opportunity with insurance. Again, I think the regulators, you know, uh, you know, uh, they're good guys and, and, and they want to be part of the consumer journey as well. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, you, you have to be able to work with them and, you know, get them to the point where they're comfortable uh, with that kind of uh, opportunity. Yeah. Th- that's been my, um, I, I wrote a couple of articles on the insurance nerds blog that was critical of the quote unquote on demand insurance, but it was mostly the, you know, I want to insure my bike for a weekend. Yeah. And I struggled with that because I'm like, that, do- that doesn't make any sense. Like the folks that are buying that insurance are going to buy it mostly because they know there's a higher probability something's going to go wrong. And sure. I said, I said, if those tech companies are so sure that that sort of on-demand insurance where people should just pay a premium when the risk is actually exists and not pay when the risk uh, uh, you know, disappears, what I said is that then the technology exists to, to kind of wrap it all up where the customer is not required to kind of buy it and then get rid of it. The technology takes care of itself. The technology itself knows and can cycle through, okay, the car isn't like, as you described, the car is in motion, the risk, the the liability is now kicking in. Oh, the car is parked. It's not. And kind of keep track of those on and off switches over time versus forcing the consumer to decide ahead of time, I need to, I'm going to buy it now. Oh, I got to shut it off. That type of thing. So it's, I I think that's been a struggle with the quote, maybe it's a misnomer on demand insurance with, you know, having consumers buy it when they want it. And I think your technology is really just sort of assigning a risk factor when the, when the risk actually exists and then backing it off when it doesn't exist and kind of keeping a credit debit uh, balance sheet almost of that over time. Well, sure. I mean, uh, you know, we're not there yet either uh, in completely in terms of what you're describing. I mean, if you think about, uh, you know, uh, the cyber product that we have, uh, you know, it's a type of subscription model where, you know, it really is on all the time. I mean, you know, on the other hand, if you feel like, you know, you don't have a cyber risk anymore, it is just a month to month kind of situation. It's not, you know, a, an annual policy. Obviously, for any kind of insurance, you can turn it off anyway. You can go and, you know, say, hey, look, I'm, I'm, I'm done. But, uh, but the opportunity that exists is to try to get the, um, I think really to prevent the the problem, right? Uh, instead of uh, what you're describing, which of course is you know effectively adverse selection, and you know you're getting a you're getting a, a you know a situation where somebody's only buying the insurance, and how do you handle that? You know when they know the risk is going to be greater, right? Um, well, there are a variety of things that we do uh, to handle that kind of opportunity in terms of the insurance, um, and and we work with you know some pretty significant, uh, you know, uh, individuals from major university uh, that uh, have, uh, you know, provided us with a lot of learnings in terms of uh, behavioral science and, and, you know, behavioral economics and how people behave given a certain situation. And there's empirical evidence that they behave in a certain way if you, you know, trust them, so to speak, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, but again, you're right. Uh, The opportunity that we think exists is for us to be able to offer uh, products in a way that make a big difference to what we think the, you know, people are going to want for not only, you know, how they want to buy things today, but, you know, the opportunity for the way that you provide it in the future. Let's face it, technology itself is going to make a difference in all walks of life, it's going to do a lot of very interesting things. So there's no reason why, in terms of uh, you know your financial services, insurances, the kinds of things that make a difference in your life, that you can't have uh, you know protection, right? Which is really what insurance is all about, uh, in a way that makes sense to you, not the way that it makes sense to the insurance company, right? <laughs> Yeah. So which is, that's my which is the way we've been doing business for 300 years. I know. Well, uh, exactly. Yeah. Um, can, can I ask a question, um, Valerie, about uh, distribution model? Uh, so you're you essentially have two products. I, I mean, I mean, a, 
and I mean what I mean by that you have some you have you're acting as a risk bearing entity and as one product and then you're offering technology and and a platform to the other but from the risk bearing side like the home sharing and um, the ride sharing and the cyber what's the what's the distribution model how can people how do people reach slice uh, so we're, we're very much a uh, distribution agnostic. Um, we, we work with our partners and every single partner ha has a different reach. Uh, every different part, you know, every partner has, uh, a different model. Um, uh, you know, some are direct, some are, ha you know, have an agent model, which is obviously encompassing, um, uh, of, of, you know, very different themes, but, um, uh, it is essentially um, a very agnostic uh, distribution model. Uh, uh, I, let me add to that. Uh, agreed. Uh, that's absolutely correct. Uh, Valerie is correct about that. Um, the one thing I, I will add to that is uh, on uh, you know our sort of direct to consumer model. Now, of course, uh, Valerie's right about the agnostic part of it, uh, agents, uh, you know, wholesalers and so forth. Uh, as we work with carriers, uh, we don't really care how the insurance that we're selling through them is distributed. Um, but our direct-to-consumer model, I mean, we use the typical sort of, you know, uh, Facebook and, you know, uh, Google AdWords. And from a distribution perspective, uh, you know, it's really a digital play. Uh, there are some interesting uh, experiments that uh, uh, have been done that we've also done uh, in terms of just snail mail and the kinds of things that people think, oh my God, that's just how we have always, you know, gotten information. But in fact, if you do it in a digital way, uh, you know, the results are quite interesting. Uh, but so from a distribution perspective, uh, for example, uh, in our home share product, uh, we distribute, uh, you know, direct to consumer uh, through the, you know, various social media platforms, the advertising that we do and so forth. Uh, on the other hand, we also have uh, some distribution partners uh, that are not dissimilar from what you were talking about uh, earlier in terms of, you know, uh, you know, cooperatives and so forth. Now, that's not exactly how it's done, but the point is, is that we have, uh, you know, some platforms that we're also distributing our products through at this point. And of course, we're looking for, uh, we're constantly looking for partners where, you know, the, the partner would have uh, an opportunity to offer uh, something uh, to their, their consumer, you know, a, a vacation rental management company, uh, or, you know, a platform that uh, is, um, you know, uh, you know, doing home share, et cetera, you know, short-term vacation rental. And those kinds of platforms and those kinds of opportunities, of course, then allow us to spread the message, uh, you know, a, a hell of a lot faster, frankly. Uh, so that's been a very interesting, uh, you know, uh, perspective for us from a distribution, uh, uh, you know, from, from the way that we actually distribute the uh, product that we sell as home share. Uh, I know if you get into the carrier market and you have, have partners like Progressive, which of course has been publicly announced. Uh, you know, we're on their website with their home share product. You know, the bottom line is, is that kind of opportunity for us is something that uh, we, we feel very strongly about. And that's also a very interesting uh, kind of uh, kind of way to, you know, distribute the product as well. Yeah. So um, that's, incredibly interesting it's um I, I sort of think of slice as one of the uh, one of the original intro techs you know right up there with uh, the lemonades of the world when uh, probably before insure tech was even a coined term <laughs> i don't i don't know ernest when you guys were sitting in that cafe did did you did you know that there was a word called insure tech you know uh <laughs> i think i think that there was a concept <laughs> for sure <laughs> yeah, I mean, insurance is funny. Which is where, you know, where uh, that came about. But anyway, I'll, I'll let you answer the question. Or... Yeah, I don't think it was actually called, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't remember it being called. I mean, there was insurance technology, of course, and there were a fair number of investments actually being made by, uh, you know, a number of VCs uh, at the time in 2014. Of course, we formed the company 2015. Um but uh, by that point, there had begun to be the thought that, uh, you know, there was, uh, uh, you know, at least uh, 
the opportunity for technology to do something in insurance. Uh, I don't remember it being called InsureTech at the time, uh, but you know, we were sort of focused on uh, finding a niche. Uh, you know, it's like anything else. You can't really get out and uh, try to compete with Geico and Progressive and, and the rest of the guys that you know, spend billions of dollars on advertising on an annual basis. Um, so you, you, know, you look to try to find some place where you can make a difference. And we saw these gaps in the market, as Valerie was describing earlier, uh, regarding uh, things that people weren't being insured for uh, and thought, well, you know, if we can actually make a, a, a play in, in a marketplace where there's an opportunity for us to be a, you know, sort of a bigger fish in a, uh, you know, in a smaller pond, uh, that would make a pretty big difference. And if you can actually differentiate, your, differentiate yourself to the extent that you really are the guys being able to offer something that just nobody else is doing, and it makes sense, Right. Um, you know, I think we came together with the opportunity to, uh, to make a difference. And if you think about our home share product, you know, it's a primary non-contributory insurance product that, you know, really provides very effective cover for somebody doing home sharing um, during the period of time that they're doing it. Uh, you know, so, so, so and, and then, you know, we've obviously carried that concept over to other products that we're working on or, or that we have in market, um, you know, as a part of our, just our DNA, uh, frankly. Uh, so, so in the end, it's, it's about being able to, you know, assist the consumer in a way that the consumer wants to be assisted or that we think the consumer wants to be assisted. It's about being able to get out, you know, with our carrier partners, uh, this uh, notion of, uh, you know, minimum viable product so that you can put out in a matter of a few weeks products that consumers, uh, you know, may want. Uh, but, you know, if you're, if you're only 80% of the way there, at least what you've done is you have a very rapid iteration capability to put it right, right? So, I mean, frankly, as we know, major carriers typically will take products that um, they're working on and they sort of have to be perfect because in the traditional model, it's so expensive to put, uh, you know, products out to, to the uh, marketplace that agents or wholesalers or consumers are looking for. Uh, it's not that they're wrong about those products. Of course, they're absolutely right about the products. It's just that it takes so long because in the traditional model, if you, you know, don't get it exactly right uh, when you put it out, um, it's so darned expensive to then go back and sort of recreate or, you know, try to change it. Uh, with our model, and, and frankly, this is kind of part of the eating the dog food thing I was talking about earlier. Uh, you take the product, you, you know, get it to MVP status very quickly in a few weeks, uh, get it out to the consumer. Uh, they tell you whether they like it or not, what's right or what's wrong. Uh, you know, obviously you're not going to put something out that you think is going to fail, but, uh, and then, uh, you know, very rapid iteration. Maybe you've got it 80% right. Maybe you've got 90% right. Uh, to the point where then you get into product market fit and scale. So the ability to be able to do that is something that we've created, you know, from a methodology perspective. Uh, it's part of the platform. It's part of what we do. Uh, and as I said before, it kind of feeds into this, you know, not only partnership model, but this entire sort of ecosystem that we, uh, we think we're, uh, we're, we're, we're a part of at this point. Sure. Sure. Um, you two have worked together before. We have. We have, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm, I'm curious, how much, how much was that experience? Because it was a significant time, significant years, uh, working for a, a tech firm that's creating platforms in the PNC industry. How did that experience uh, help both of you with with your execution and, and maybe even the creativity or the, the innovation of the idea for something like Slice, how much did that experience help? Uh, wow, that's a, that, that's a deep question. Uh, <laughs> you want me to answer that, Ernie? I, I, I'm, I'm happy to answer sure, it. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, you know, I think, I think what the and I've, I've been in insurance only, you know, with less than a decade, uh, believe it or not. So I've only built the insurance expertise as part of my IT and software expertise um, and consulting expertise, et cetera, et cetera. Um, 
but but I'm newer to the to the industry. So um, I I think what contributed to slice was or the slice of ideology and or you know implementation of you know slices thought process and and now our execution and and what we're seeing in the marketplace was um, it, it confirmed our the gap in the marketplace and um, you know what we just kept seeing was traditional models so you you put a traditional model and you say let's do some innovative things but the innovative things have uh old principles as it relates to execution so let's get it let's get this let's get that um and you know no question that due diligence is is obviously a, a part of the process but um it, it it was just an old model that was just not a good i shouldn't say a good i should say um a modern engagement model and so um so that you know from from that standpoint it was just a confirmation uh of what slice is and why slice came to be and the people around slice and the people who you know have supported slice and who are working with slice yeah, I mean, uh, for me, uh, you know, uh, a lot of the experience uh, really came from a background in insurance technology, you know, working for an insurance company, uh, you know, I was, I worked for travelers for a while. Um, and, you know, so uh, working in the insurance industry, generally, uh, primarily in insurance technology, and then we wound up you know, working on sort of the agent side as well uh, in terms of, you know, selling insurance. Heck, at one point uh, I thought, well, we've, we've tried selling and working in policy administration and, you know, various kinds of insurance technologies for a very long time. And, you know, gee, it's got to be easier to sell insurance than to do that, right? Uh, well, it turns out not to be so true, right? It's, it's not easy to, you know, to get, get insurance off the ground, so to speak, uh, especially with you when you have a new product and, you know, you're, you're trying to convince folks that, hey, this makes sense. Um, but what we discovered uh, during that period of time is, I'll trumpet what Valerie is saying, is, is that the systems, really what you're trying to do uh, with Slice is not uh, pave the cow, you know, pave the cow path. Um, you know, again, an idiom, but, you know, if you think about the way that people uh, sort of try to transform their companies, and, and I hear a lot about, well, we're going to make it a digital organization, uh, but what they really mean in most, well, not in all cases, but in many cases, uh, is, is what they're trying to do is to uh, transform, uh, you know, a, a, either a paper process or a process that <clears throat> really is nothing more than, you know, uh, making electronic uh, a uh, process that they have that, uh, you know, has been used for decades or literally even hundreds of years. And all they're doing now is, is you know, you're, 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 uh, you're, 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 you know, you're making an electronic, po you know, electronic path, if you will, to do that. But it's the same process. It hasn't changed, uh, you know, in all that time. Uh, all you're really doing is transforming it, right? Uh, transforming it is not bad. You know, if, if you can eke out uh, 1%, as you know, if a carrier could eke out 1% and on the expense side, uh, they're just thrilled with that. And, and, and actually they should be because it's, it's really hard to do. Um, we have a model where, uh, and we won the Sellant uh, Model Carrier Award uh, this year, where they're showing, uh, and this is not us, this is data that they've come up with, and I think they're about to come up with even better data uh, from what I've been uh, you know, told. Um, that if you use a technique or, or a system like what we have, the actual cost of, uh, you know, putting out an insurance product with a traditional system, you know, let's say it's one, you know, it's a 0.35. I mean, it's like literally 35 cents of, of a dollar to put it out doing the way we're doing it. And we actually think it's less. And that's what we're about. I, I think they're about to uh, show that it, it may actually be true. So if you think about the, 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 you know, sort of making a company digital, uh, that's one thing, but getting product out in a way that, you know, consumers want to do something, uh, you know, with you uh, and do it quickly 
so that you understand that, you know, that, that, that is a need that can be met. And besides all the other things I was talking about in terms of the way the technology could actually be used. Yeah. I mean, why wouldn't you want your insurance, you know, your homeowner insurance just to be part of your mortgage? Um, I mean, I don't know if that's a good example or not, but I, I, no, just, I think, I think that's a great example. I, 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 I really rail. I, you know, I, I take my, I'm going to use a Khrushchev uh, example. <laughs> Most people, but I take my shoe off and whack it up against the table. And I'm just like, uh, people don't necessarily want to buy insurance. So as long as, as long as um, the effects of the insurance are transparent enough, I think the goal of the industry should be to abstract the user um, and make it as yeah. simple as possible for them yeah. to do that. And that gets all, like, we can rewind this tape all the way back to the beginning when uh, I'm not sure which one of you brought this up, but you know, like 150 underwriting questions when it's not necessary to do that. I know more, I know more about my customers' properties than they do. Exactly. You know? It's period. It's just, you yeah. know, I, I don't, we, you know, um, I, yeah. we, we have a, we have a philosophy um, and what we do is not to ask a question that we can't get the information ourselves uh, as long as it's economical. So um, I, I, I appreciate that. And uh, in um, to respect your time, I wanted to trans transition over to the personal side of this particular podcast where I ask my guests uh, a couple of personal questions. Um, and the first one um, we'll do ladies before gentlemen, Valerie. Sure. But, uh, no, no worries. <laughs> yeah. If are there uh, are there any technologies you use that you have found to be helpful or effective in uh, keeping you productive and or organized? I think the most productive technology that I use to date is, uh, and, and there are many, and they're all respectable. Uh, but the one for me that has worked the best is LinkedIn. To be honest. You're not the first. Uh, yeah, no, I'm not the first. I'm not the last. I'm not the. I'm not. I'm, I'm hey, not the fiftieth. Hey, I, 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 I had someone that said coffee. Oh, okay, okay. So, um, it, so. Is, it is uh, an amazing technology that just keeps uh, people like us, uh, you know, connected and uh, in tune with each other. And I, I've just, um, I've just found that it's. Uh, uh, it's just the most uh, productive technology for me, for yeah. that matter, you yeah. know, from, from my work perspective. Yeah. I don't think you're alone there. Um, yeah. Ernest. Well, I use any number of uh, things to be honest with you. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, um, I guess really uh, to, to really keep things uh, sort of organized. I, I do, I do use LinkedIn, of course. Uh, we use HubSpot at uh, Slice, and I find that to be a pretty, pretty interesting technology. The HubSpot Sales Pro stuff, I think, is pretty solid. Uh, not to denigrate any of the other CRM type systems that are out there, but I find that one to be uh, pretty useful uh, because if you think about, uh, you know, a we can use it um, from a marketing perspective. Uh, you know, um, you know, we're tied into it. Uh, because we have, and, and, and honestly, some of the technologies that we use internally, uh, we have some, some things that are proprietary to us in terms of the databases and so forth that we use. We, we hook that into HubSpot and we're able to understand, you know, what customers are doing. Again, think of it as a, you know, really, when I mean digital, I mean a digital platform, you know, from the, from the get-go. So, for example, you know, we do the streaming analytics. We don't do the analytics after the fact. You know, we know what the customer is doing when they're doing it. And so all of that leads to then, uh, you know, better customer engagement. You know, our ability to provide customers with what they're looking for at the time they're looking for it. And, uh, you know, and in some cases to recommend things to them that they may not know that they're looking for. Right. So uh, that that ability uh, to do that in the platform, I think, is something that's quite interesting. And we do use, uh, you know, tools uh, as you're asking around that to assist us in, in doing it because, you know, why build absolutely everything uh, when, you know, really what we're focused on is trying to provide, you know, the best possible customer journey to, uh, to folks. Yep. 
And you're, that also is not the first time someone has brought up HubSpot and I've actually used it and love it. I think from a, from a CRM standpoint, uh, well, first of all, I, I think uh, their base product is free. So yes. no excuses to not try it, but I've never used the pro version, but I can imagine just looking at what they give for the free one that, uh, and how you're describing that it would be uh, quite valuable. Yeah, it's, it's not very expensive either. Uh, you know, if you have, you know, 50 people on it, well, okay, then I think it gets to be, yeah. uh, you know, it could be pricey, but then of course, by that time you do an enterprise version, but yeah, no, I, I like it. And, and I, I think it's no more than, typically what, uh, you know, uh, one of the other CRM systems might cost and pretty effective you know, as, as yeah. a technology. Okay. Uh, final question. Uh, Valerie, uh, are there any books, our audience loves book recommendations. Are there any <laughs> books that you have found uh, that, that were influential um, in, and it could be business or personal fiction or nonfiction, anything come to mind that really had an effect on you? There are a lot of books, definitely personal and professional. Uh, I think the number one author that I love to um, reference is Malcolm Gladwell. Uh, he just writes books that are, you know, out of this world, but in this world. Um, in terms of thinking, in terms of, you know, people talk about work-life balancing, and I like to think of work-life blending because it's all blended together. Um, and so he somehow has a way of writing about, you know, themes of life that are um, about this world. Uh, you know, the world is flat, the outliers, uh, blink, um, you know, a few of the books that I can reference. So those are some of the, some of the books that I, I, I would say, or this particular author that I would say yeah. that I has influenced me. Um, and more particularly because he is, uh, you know, about the person and business. It, it, it just has such a complex um, intervention if yeah. you will, it, it, and I, I don't like to use the word intervention, but it's, it just has a very nice um, intellection, if you will. <laughs> yeah, I, I, enjoy, I enjoy his book so much that I get, um, I buy the book and the audio book. Oh, um, you do, for, right. For one thing, he's got a very soothing voice, so it's perfect for like a plane. Oh, um, wow. Okay. But, I've um, not heard his for, audio books. <laughs> but for a walk or whatever, and you learn so much. And I get very frustrated when people dig on him, when they say, you know, oh, you know, that the, the, the 10,000 hour rule, that's just like, that doesn't cover everything. And it's just like, that's not what Malcolm Gladwell does. He's not, he's not writing, a, writing a scientific treatise. He's basically giving, you know, a generalization that if you do this or, you know, on the tipping point, if you, you, you know, these certain things, they, they're, they're general models that we as humans can use to make other decisions or help us in our day-to-day -day life. It's like, it's, it's not more complicated than that. Come on, people. <laughs> it actually is not. And the fact of the matter is that anybody will, you know, criticize anything. <laughs> yes. Yes. And with social media, it's so easy to do. Everyone has a forum to do that. So including, right. including myself, um, <laughs> Ernest, Ernest, you have big shoes to fill. You have the final question, uh, <laughs> lay, lay it on us. What, what books have been influential, uh, in your, well, business, in your yeah, lives? you know, it's funny. I, I, I read a lot of different things. I'm reading a book, uh, as we speak, uh, by some authors, uh, I'm going to not get the name right, but it's called Digital at Scale. So, you know, I'm sort of, you know, I, re I read a lot of different things. I, I also read Foreign Affairs because I was a political, I'm a bit of a political science uh, and history, not job. So, um, but the Digital at Scale book, I think, is really quite good uh, from a business perspective. Uh, and then, I, but I'm a history buff, so I tend to read uh, outside uh, the sort of business community uh, reading a book right now called the Republic for which it stands by a uh, history professor, uh, Richard white. And uh, it's, it's about the United States during reconstruction and the Gilded age, which really is 1865 to 1896. Um, because uh, quite honestly, we may be going through, uh, you know, from a, 
uh, you know, political perspective in this country, we may, may be going through something not dissimilar from that. So uh, it's been interesting in terms of, uh, you know, uh, you've had uh, when you go to college and, you know, uh, even at, well after and, and reading a lot of American history, that's a period that tends to get skipped a fair amount, uh, but is really fascinating for me uh, in terms of uh, what happened during that period of time. Uh, and how it might lead to some lessons that we could learn about our current period. So that that's really it. I, I, that's the one I'm reading now. I, I probably have half a dozen books that I could describe, but I would bore your audience and I shan't do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love it. I love it. Um, those will go up on the show notes. All of your contact information will go up on the show notes as well. And so uh, I wanted to thank you for taking time um, on on this afternoon before before the weekend to uh, Ernest Hirsch and Valerie Dragantis uh, of Slice Labs for thank you for coming on. Thank you for explaining Slice, a little bit of the diner backstory. Never heard that before. And uh, I, I really, really appreciate you taking the time to educate us about on-demand insurance and your, your business proposition. Thank you so much, Nick. Thanks, Nick. I really appreciate it. Okay, thank you to you both. <laughs>